Hi, I'm Dan Gutekantz, Superintendent of the Needham Schools. I'm here with Barbara Collins, the Principal of the Newman Elementary School. Uh, we promised the community another update on the progress of work at Newman this summer, and we're pleased to uh, take the community on another tour uh, to see what's, what's been happening. What do you say we go in? I think it's just time to do that, so welcome to Newman. Barbara, your, the main office area looks very different. Tell us, what, uh, tell us what's happened here. It certainly does, Dan. We have had all the carpeting taken up. We have tiles down that have been cleaned and waxed and off-gassed. The tile is, has been put into all the closets as well. And I'm going to now turn to Dr. Stern to ask him how this is going to be helpful for all the staff and students here at Newman School. I think, first of all, getting the carpets up, I mean, they could be a reservoir for any mold and certainly for dust, too. I mean, they're just traps for dust. So getting the carpets out, the tile down, I mean, it looks wonderful. It, it smells good right now. There are some closets that had a real musty smell, and those have been cleaned out thoroughly. Carpet has been removed and tile placed, and uh, I think we're in good shape in this office area. A ton of work has been going on in the media center, and uh, Dr. Miller, you were you were pretty much very much involved actually in in helping us understand what was going on on the floor uh, in this room. Can you can you describe the work that's happened and what you first saw and what's been going on? Sure. In this particular area, of course, this was the area of the uh, building where there was a, a musty odor um, early on, and um, uh, some complaints about the air quality in the room. Um, one of the larger uh, concerns we had was there was there is subterranean ductwork under underneath this floor for the the old ventilation system, and when the carpeting was removed from the underlayment, um, there was some dark staining that uh, was observed, and we didn't know at the time um, what the cause of that staining was. The worst case scenario would have been if the water is coming up from beneath the floor, and we had visions and that when we pulled up the plywood, we might see um, some, some mold in the, on the bottom of it. Um, we'd, we'd made numerous floor cuts in the building and actually pulled the, uh, not only the plywood, but the underlayment up. And on the underside of, of that um, flooring, there, it was, was absolutely clean. It looked like clean wood. And there was a uh, membrane uh, that was put down, a, a moisture membrane that uh, we also tested for asbestos and it didn't contain any asbestos. So uh, the, the end all be all was that the, the dark lines we saw was actually uh, um, a, uh, a result of washing the carpet on a regular basis and water actually on the seams of the plywood uh, causing that staining and uh, much to our um, 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 delight, um, there, it, it didn't end up being a problem. The moisture, the odor in this room, uh, uh, we believe was really a result of the carpeting itself uh, and um, uh, the steam cleaning of the carpeting um, over time, just uh, causing a, 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 an odor. And it, and it seems uh, that they're, they're placing a new, uh, the, the uh, uh, covering up uh, the floor after it's been remediated and we're leveling it and putting new uh, linoleum or marnoleum, I think, so that the entire uh, media center will no longer have a rug but, or carpet, but it will have marnoleum and, and that will help keep the, uh, uh, the room continue to keep it clean and dry. Um, Dr. Winters, if you, as, you, as you think about and you look at this room and everything that, that's been done and the comment about the, uh, the, the, the presence of mold, are you confident, do you feel comfortable with the work that's, that's, uh, that's ongoing here? Yeah, I think there'll be no mold uh, here left in, in the, this environment and it'll be a safe air environment for the kids and, uh, and uh, faculty. I think it's been very well done and, and I think uh, as Kevin said and then the sampling that'll be done, we'll be able to validate that and verify that uh, that is true. So I, I think we're, we're in good, a good position for success here. Uh, Dr. Feeney, you, you, the, the work that's going on here, this is a lot different than the last time I think you were in this media center. It was filled with books and, and, and kind of a musty uh, odor and rug. Uh, we're, it's a lot different. We have new duct work. Um, maybe you can comment on what you, what you see. Well, a uh, number of different things that have been done. Uh, one is the uh, ductwork that's been installed is entirely new. Uh, that has uh, 
uh, will be able to bring in fresh air from a different location than uh, where it was coming originally in, into the media center. Um, and that the area where a number of different moisture sources were identified, which was the old system, that will be abandoned entirely. Um, what I can tell you is, is that the smell of this area is now wood as opposed to a musty odor, which, would have, which was very noticeable and prevalent when we looked at the building initially. And uh, I'm, I'm amazed at the scope of the, uh, the duct work, which is really quite extensive and uh, is, it, it looks more, more permanent certainly than temporary um, and, and pleased with, with that work that's ongoing. Workers are installing the flooring. Um, I know you had an opportunity to talk to them. What, what uh, folks get concerned about the smell of new things? How, how does that affect the, uh, what the project here? One of the things that you always want to be concerned about when installing new materials is what is in the glues and adhesives. And one of the things that we always recommend is instead of using an organic solvent-based material, is use the water-based type because that will limit the amount of measurable materials that could be irritating to the eyes, nose, and throat and respiratory system. So in looking at some of these different materials, number one is, is that a lot of it's water-based. And secondly is, is that the one thing that we can smell in here is the odor of wood. We're not smelling adhesive. So the worst time that you're going to be smelling anything from these different adhesives is when it's being put down. So that over time, once it's down and the tile is down, I would not expect there to be any significant odors associated with the adhesives or exposure to it. So there, there may be a new smell, but it, it, it dissipates with time? Yeah, exactly, and, and I think most importantly, the workers installing uh, these tiles don't have any symptoms, and they're on top of it, and they're getting the acute exposure to this uh, water-based epoxy, and it's, it's, uh, it's a very low irritative uh, source. So once it's dry, there'll be uh, no off-gassing, there'll be no uh, symptoms in uh, faculty and students. Chip, can you share with us how many classrooms had uh, carpeting removed and asbestos abated, and, uh, and where are we at in, in uh, that process? Okay, as far as the abatement goes, that's all been completed. Uh, carpet abatement was all basically out on the west wing. There were 24 to 26 classrooms. We're on the floor above the auditorium. There were eight rooms up here that were totally asbestos abated and had all new floors installed. That's great. So we have, uh, and floors are waxed and, and ready to go. There's still uh, some of the work the contractor's doing, but, but uh, generally the classrooms are, the flooring is done. Exactly. Basically what we need to do, do now is just set the classrooms up. That's great. Uh, Dr. Feeney, one of the recommendations from the Department of Public Health and your team was to uh, clean out and somehow protect the air intake pits uh, for the, the building. Can you describe the work uh, that you've seen that's been done? Sure. Uh, there were two things that were happening. One was is that the roofs didn't have gutters and downspouts on them. The system doesn't have roof drains in the middle, so it was designed so that water would come down downspouts. And we hear, see here an example where water from the roof would be emptying directly into the fresh air intake for this particular section, and this was found in a number of areas around the space on the outside of the building. So what we recommended were two things. One would be to protect these um, these vents from air, water getting into them from the building and to redirect and reestablish the gutters and downspout system so that water would shed away from the building rather than into these areas. Because as these would get wet, water would stay in there and then be drawn into the building through the ventilation system. And what we saw, thought was happening over in the media center was exactly that. So it was just adding more and more moisture into that area where it didn't need to be. I would say uh, certainly uh, Mr. Chip Laffey and Mr. Rick Merson and their crews have been instrumental in, in replicating this, uh, this very procedure throughout the, throughout the facility. So it's in, uh, it's in much better shape than, than it was. Chip, uh, where we're standing used to be uh, about almost over a dozen trees. Uh, can you tell us what, what happened in this area here and, and, uh, and the work that they're doing on the building right now? Uh, yes, actually throughout the entire Newman complex there were 21 pine trees that according to recommendations from DPH we did take down. Uh, the trees were taken down and after the trees were removed uh, all the stumps were stumped out and then all the wood chips were removed. If you look along the side of the building this is going to be the temporary uh, mountings for the exterior 
uh, HV system. This is going to be the actual ductwork supports. These are the kindergarten classrooms here. That's correct. Yeah. This will be the ductwork supports and the actual unit will be, will be based right over on this side here and the other one will be on the other side of the bridge. There is, um, uh, there still is a lot of work to be done but they, they look like they're, uh, they're, they're um, on their way and, and moving forward. I believe we're going to make it. It's going to be tight, but we'll make it. Uh, Dr. Feeney, uh, is, uh, you think about this, the trees coming down, this certainly looks a lot different than what you saw before. What's the effect on, on the school and, and the health of the students and staff inside? Well, one thing that I think will happen is, is that this particular part of the building will be drier because uh, a number of different things that uh, the pine trees did to this part of the building which was not helpful. One was that uh, with the gutters and downspouts missing from this particular end of the building, what you had was water pouring over the sides and because the pine trees were where, where they were, those walls never would dry and would stay perpetually wet and that the pine trees in and of themselves would be a source of pollen and pine needles. And one of the things that was found in the scoping of the ductwork for this particular section is pine needles was actually found in the ductwork. So that you had pine needles with a lot of moisture that's pouring into the uh, air intake pit right here, uh, getting into the building. You add that to pine needles and other debris that was found there and pine pollen, all of that are wonderful things to grow mold. So what you're essentially doing by removing the pine needles and the pine trees is to remove mold growth media sources and you're also allowing for the building to dry, which is very important. You have to, it's very important to have water shed off a building appropriately instead of onto the building you want it to shed away from the building and that's what was happening initially. At, at some point, as I look at the site here, I know that uh, we're, we're going to have a conversation about getting some low-growing vegetation um, and, and bushes, perhaps, so that it can spruce up the area a little bit, but without affecting the building. Dr. Winters and Dr. Stern, uh, you've both been involved with this, uh, this exemplary team in, in uh, helping us decide what some of the criteria will be so that we can open up Newman uh, safely and, and uh, in a way that we're confident about the health for all the staff and students. Uh, maybe, uh, Tom, you could share a little bit about what, what are some of those criteria that you, as you look around you, um, are, will be important? Yeah, I think uh, as we've worked together in this team, and this has been quite a team that's been amassed by, by Dan and, uh, and uh, Tom Campbell and Barbara, of course, being the, uh, the center of the team, uh, it's as well as I've ever seen any indoor air quality problem approached. And I think as we worked with the environmental uh, health people and the state uh, uh, Mass Part Department of Public Health, or that uh, we've been looking at uh, sampling that will be done in these, these rooms and air sampling and looking for dust and particulates and different gases in the air and making sure there are no vol volatile organic compounds and make it, it I mean the, the real goal here is to create a safe environment for the faculty and the students and minimize any risks of ill effects from uh, the indoor air and I think, I think it's been done as good as it can be done and it'll be a uh, it'll be ready uh, to go and when it opens on September 8th. And, and, and Dr. Stern, th there's no question that after we open, we're not done yet. There, there's still work that'll be done. I know you've been uh, pretty instrumental in, in pulling together some of that thinking. What will that look like beyond the opening of school? Well, absolutely, and just to echo Dr. Winter's comments uh, about the teamwork aspect of things, I think those meetings will still continue. Uh, weekly meetings, if not more so. The testing will be done in a phase-like process, uh, periodic testing of particulates, looking for mold, uh, volatile organic compounds. That will be ongoing. CO2 measurement will be ongoing. And also the school nurse and school health nurse leader will be uh, instrumental in helping us, uh, notifying us if there are any ongoing issues with staff, with students, and uh, they are available constantly, as am I, for uh, any questions that parents might have concerning the ongoing testing and work that's being done. You, you, have, you have a lot of patients in the town of Needham, some, some, uh, some, some students both at Newman and at other schools, and as you've watched all of this unfold, and now as we stand in the building and we look at the work that's been done, um, and, and I know parents are concerned, and, and they've, they've called you and they've talked to you, um, what, what do you say to them now about the, the condition of Newman and, and where we are in this process? 
Uh, I think the, the process has been a, a fabulous process. I think the work that has been done has been outstanding so far, and I feel very confident that school will be ready to open on September 8th, and it will be a healthy environment for everyone who's in this building, and the monitoring will be extremely important, and I am confident that we will do that. Uh, Barbara, a lot of work since the last time we were here. Are you feeling pretty good about where, where we're at with everything? I'm feeling just wonderful about where we're at. I think all the right experts and professionals were brought in. You and Kate have galvanized the town and the school administration, and it's just magical what's been happening here. And the right environmentalists are going to ensure that the right testing is done so that the school is safe and healthy for all children when it opens on the 8th. So school is opening on September 8th for Newman. It's opening on September 8th for Newman. And on September 7th, we're having an, an open house for parents here at Newman from 4.30 to 6. We will have members of the IAQ, the indoor air quality team here to answer any questions, any last minute questions that parents have. And we will be having members of the PTC here who will be serving coffee and welcoming all adults into the building and around the outside so people can see ahead of time where we are. And my understanding is that it's just uh, really for adults because the school facility can't accommodate all the adults Absolutely. and children right now, but adults can come in. Yes. Classrooms won't be open, but, right. but folks will be able to wander through the building and see the work that's been done. Uh, in addition to that, I know we're working on a frequently asked questions yes. uh, that we're going to send out mm -hmm. to parents in, in our next email. And you are also mailing home back to school packets. Absolutely. And the information in that will include? It will include another copy of the calendar. It will be a back to school welcome letter for me, which will highlight some of the work that's been done over the summer and also some of the health work that the nurses have been compiling this summer to support the healthy children in the building and the healthy staff. Well, I'm just like you. I, I, uh, I echo the sentiment that I think the right people have been assembled to address the problem at Newman. Still work to be done before school mm -hmm. opens. And even after school opens, we're going to, as, as Dr. Winter and Dr. Stearns mentioned, mm -hmm. we're going to continue to monitor the building. And in addition, the Permanent Public Building Committee is looking for a long-term solution to Newman. So still a lot of activity to, uh, to come forward. Uh, but what I feel today, like you, that we're in a very good place and we're going to be ready, uh, ready to roll for students at Newman on September 8th. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, good. Barbara. Thanks, Dan.